This tutorial is going to go over my method to paint fire using the vivid light mode in Photoshop. So if that's something that you're interested in, keep watching. Starting out, create a new layer. With the paint bucket tool, paint this layer white. This is going to be your base that you're going to be clipping the finished fire effect to, so go ahead and name it base. Create another new layer, paint this layer black, and lower the opacity to 70%. We're going to use this layer to both see our fire and control its intensity, so go ahead and name it Control Layer. Let's set up our effects now. Create another new layer, leave this layer blank for now, and name it Fire. Change the layer mode of this new layer to Vivid Light, found down in your Contrast Blend mode list. Once done, double click the empty gray area of this layer to prompt your Layers Effects menu and tick the box that says Transparency Shapes Layer off. This way, the vivid light mode will react how we want it to when we make adjustments to the black control layer later on. Next, open your color picker and select this yellow. Copy and paste the hex code here into your box to make sure you're using this exact one. You can save the swatch in your swatches and name it something like fire yellow if you want to so you can use it again in the future with this setup. You can also use a different color for your fire later on, but I normally just use this one because it tends to work well. Let's paint some fire now. Make sure you have pen pressure active and that you have opacity by pressure set to on on your brush for this and start painting your fire onto this layer. Fire, like smoke, tends to have different levels of intensity and opacity throughout it, so being able to apply different levels of opacity to this with your brush is very important. Also, the vivid light mode is going to be using the lack of opacity around the edges and the higher levels of black to change the way your fire looks around those areas. So you really do need to have edges that are softer and fade out on your painted fire for this to work correctly. More smoky brushes that have faded edges also work best because of this. You can hunt down pre-made smoke and fire brushes that are designed with this in mind from places like DeviantArt or Brush Easy. You can use splatter brushes, hair brushes, or air brushes to paint your fire, or you can softly erase parts manually. Water brushes also tend to work pretty well if you have any of those. If you want to make your own fire brush to use, you can also use the smudge tool set to a strength of about 80% with an airbrush to pull out and fade the edges of a harder brush and make it look more smoky. It really just depends on what you want it to look like. As a side note, you can also use this method with pre-made explosion brushes to add explosions and things like that. Anyway, once you're done, if you mess with the opacity level of your control layer a bit, you'll see that it changes the amount of brightness and red that is showing on your fire around the edges. As I mentioned earlier, because more of the black layer is coming through the faded areas, you're getting more red with these areas. Keep this in mind for the future when you're more comfortable working with this setup, but leave the opacity of the black layer to 70% for now. Now we need to isolate this effect so it's only being applied to the areas where there's fire. Create a duplicate of this fire layer by clicking on it and pressing Ctrl J. Change the duplicate's layer mode back to normal. Drag this duplicate down to the bottom of the list under your white layer. Select your white layer now and hold down Alt while hovering between your fire layer and white layers until the clipping box icon appears and then click to clip them together. Then select your white layer and press Ctrl E to merge it onto the fire duplicate. Select your black layer and clip it down with Alt and then press Ctrl E again to merge it onto your white layer. Use Alt again to clip your fire down and Ctrl E again to merge and turn this into one solid layer. Now you should have your fire base done and ready to apply the finishing effects to. Go into your Layers Effects menu by clicking on the empty gray area of this new fire layer to prompt the menu box and set up the final touches. Navigate down to Inner Glow and copy these settings in color. Copy the hex code of this color into your own hex box. When you're done, navigate down to Outer Glow and copy these settings in this color. Go ahead and hit the new style button to save this in your own effects to use later if you want to. Name it for fire or whatever you want. Check that both the boxes are ticked and hit done and OK. Alternatively, you can add highlights and glows on new layers manually, but it's just easier to use the effects menu and stack them and keep them tied to the specific layer. 
Now you should have some decent looking fire to use on your pieces. You can rasterize the layer effects by right clicking and selecting rasterize layer effects from the pop up menu and make edits to this with a brightness and contrast adjustment, hue adjustment, or slap on the same fire effects we just made for a brighter different look. You can also duplicate this and change modes to mess around with and merge it. You can apply this fire over top of your bases using different modes for different looks. Color dodge, linear dodge, add, lighten, hard light, screen, vivid light, linear light, and pin light have all worked with this depending on the look you're going for and how dark your background image is. So definitely mess around with modes to see what you like the look of best. It's up to you how you want to apply it at this point. Anyway, that's it for this one. Enjoy the fire. Later.